And from the River Valley, you may have never heard of them, but Invotech, an Alma-based technology company, is performing miracles for those with paralysis and other disabilities. How is this tiny tech firm making such a huge impact? Now we turn our focus to a small technology firm with a huge heart. It's making a big difference in some formerly desperate lives. Who and what is Invotech? You'll find out and you'll be amazed. Now from the River Valley, you may have never heard of them, but Invotech, an Alma-based technology company, is performing miracles for those with disabilities. How is this tiny tech firm making such a huge impact? Let's find out. Initially, Invotech's mission was really uh, focused on the development of technology. We were interested in how do we create technology that will be helpful to people with severe disabilities. But uh, over the years, we've really now changed that mission in that we're still developing technology, but now we're really interested in how do we use that technology in a way that really meets people's life goals, that helps them to achieve the things in life that they think are important. So not just develop the technology, but help people to actually use that technology that we develop in a way to meet life goals. And that's become a very important part of who Invotech is. That's Tom Jacobs, founder of Invotech, which he and his wife Diane started in 1988. Their earliest efforts were aimed at developing and marketing accessible toys and communication devices, even a voice dialing telephone. Since 1995, Invotech has focused on pursuing new ways for people with disabilities to access computers, to communicate with others, and to improve their independence. Technical mission aside, this internal company video does much more to describe the human impact of Invotech. Meet Robert, whose debilitating spinal injury altered the course of his life. He's made great strides against all odds. While his ambition is to return to the world of employment someday, for now, the simple joy of taking his dog for a walk is a huge step in a positive direction. We got the call on a Saturday afternoon and we were asked if we wanted to even to pull the plug on him basically. He said he would never do anything, he would never be off life support. That his head had been severed from his spine, he would never breathe on his own and that uh, at best the only thing he would ever do is blink his eyes. And uh, actually my husband and I fought over the fact of what Robert would want. I couldn't, I couldn't tell him not to fix him. My husband argued that Robert wouldn't want to be laying in bed blinking his eyes and on a respirator. And the hospital there, he was actually originally life flighted to a hospital in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, which was close to where his grandfather's farm was, where he was visiting when he um, had his um, four-wheeler accident. It was life flight to Johnstown, and when they did an x-ray of his head, they knew that they couldn't handle such a severe injury. So we were called and asked and said, uh, we can't move him without putting a halo on him, and if we do, he's going to die. What do you want to do? And I said, you know, uh, as you can imagine, it's the worst thing a parent could ever go through. But um, we decided we'd let Robert decide, and so we had him put the halo on his head and they flew him to Pittsburgh. And the doctors there told us that they'd never seen a live human with this injury, that only corpses. And my father-in-law is one of the toughest old birds you'd ever want to know. <laughs> I mean, he can handle any tough situation, but when I got ready to go in to see Robert, he said, you need to brace yourself, because it's really tough to see. And so I knew when he said that, it was going to be pretty bad. But. His, um, his spinal cord injury is considered incomplete because he still has. It wasn't completely broken. It was stretched. A mixture of brain damage and spinal cord injury, but my brain damage is more to the balance and 
movement part of my brain. I don't have any intellectual problems. Which is to be evaded. <laughs> Most of my damage is at C4 to C1. So I'm the weakest, you know, my arms for sure. And you can't do stuff with your legs or feet, so. I'm kind of screwed there. But I do have a degree. And I have ran a business. Started my own business. And that's why we were hoping so bad he started getting his arms back. That yeah, car there was his hands, car. Now it's his brother's. If I had my hands, it'd be junk all over the place. My arms just they bend at the elbow, but they don't go outward. He has no shoulder up. strength yet. Or down, no. I don't have the triceps. My thumbs work. So he texts. Yeah, so I can text. It. Well, now the cell phones have so much stuff on them. You know, you can play games or talk to people. You don't have to be able to use much more than your thumb, really. Yeah, he's got a droid. That's why I think that in an app and I could control my TV, my lights. It all just needs to go through the phone. Further on down the road, I think I can do more. I just. Getting myself more independent is the most important thing right now. Not having a job or going to school with me. I, I hope that um, I hope that the vision continues to grow in the direction of of, of providing people with severe disabilities a, a comprehensive set of services that allows them to succeed. I've really come to believe that what we've tried to accomplish with the Be Extraordinary program is, is really critical to someone's overall success in being able to use technology well. And I, I hope we get, get the opportunity to continue to develop in that way because I think it has, an, it has the, 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 the possibility of being uh, very successful both for Invotech from the perspective of, of allowing us to do work that really impacts people, but also from our client's perspective of, of really being able to achieve the things that they set out to do and meet the life goals that, that, that they hope to achieve after having a severe disability. 
InfoTech was recently awarded more than $550,000 in new funding from the National Institute of Health for the creation of a speech generation tool that would give young children with disabilities a fun and interactive way to learn communication skills. Jacobs and his crew, they do some good work.